Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another amazing geometry node, and this time it's Birds and the Bees, or Birds and Bees, which is basically a geometry node that I wish I had a couple of years ago, which would enable me to create this tree that we did and put it on YouTube, but the bees were exceptionally hard to get actually going around the hive, as well as we could put them as well as in our Victorian scene, or even in our Aztec scene, which you've seen in the introduction. But enough of all that, if you like this sort of thing, give us a like, subscribe, and don't forget you can get all of these geometry nodes, that's 30 plus geometry nodes, as well as all, all of our courses, absolutely free through our Patreon. So let's get started and let me show you how these work. So these two basically are pretty much the same. So we've got bees and moths here. They all work on the same principle. And lastly as well, we've also included in there this flock of birds, which is a little bit different. So there is two geometry nodes in this pack. So let's first of all come to our bees. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how they actually work. And what I'm going to do is I'll bring in first of all a... I'll bring in Suzanne, actually, it makes more sense. So let's press Shift-A, come down, bring in our monkey. This then will be the object. So it's going to be like our hive that's going to be going around there. Then what I'll do is I'll actually smooth off Suzanne so she looks a little bit better. So generate a subdivision surface. Right-click, smooth by angle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a plane. So Shift-A, bring in a plane. Now this plane is what these actual bees and everything works off. So it's what you're actually attached to geometry node to. So I'm just going to press Control A, all transforms, set the origin to geometry. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to press M, put it in a new collection, and I'll just uh, call it tutorial. And we'll drop it in there so I know which one that is. Now, once we've done that, we're ready to actually rumble. So let's go on to add modifier, generate um, a geometry node, and let's come down. And the one we want is going to be this um, flock uh, follow. So it's flock follow like so. And you'll notice now everything disappears. Now, the target is going to be our Suzanne because this is the target where all of the bees are going to be buzzing around. So let's click that on. Then what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll set the density. Let's put it onto something like 30. Then what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll set the minimum and maximum distance. Now, if you try and set these in the beginning, you won't actually see anything happen. You just need to click on this visualize distance. Once you've done that, then you can actually bring this out, as you can see. And what this is, this is the minimum distance that the bees or bugs are going to go to so you can see at the moment we don't actually want them passing through the mesh of Suzanne so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that just to the outside like so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the maximum distance so this is how far my bees or bugs will actually be buzzing around here now sometimes they do go out a little bit out of this and that's just because they actually have actually have a turn factor so you can see here we have an actual turn factor on here so just take that into account. And the other thing we've gave it is as well is some noise. So we've actually made this quite wobbly. So sometimes they come out to here, sometimes to here, but they do keep relatively well within this. And if you want them to come closer to Suzanne, just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn up the turn factor and I'm gonna show you these when they're actually, when they're actually um, working, when the bees are buzzing around, but I'm gonna just turn this up to 0.2. And basically, this is how fast the actual bug actually turns around. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the speed on um, 0.1. I'm going to just turn down this noise as well to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the scale on 0.3. This is for my bees. So 0.3 is going to be the scale of them. And then we've got things like flap speed, scale randomness, and all that good stuff. Now, at the moment, I'm going to leave uh, these um, all the same. I'm just going to turn down the glide probability as well. And then what I'm going to do is now click on my B. So let's come to my B. So there's this bird body or B body and then the wings like so. And now let's go back to Suzanne and you'll notice nothing happens. Now what I want to do is want to head on over to layout. And then what I'm going to do is just press the dot button to zoom in. And because this is actually working on, um, you know, playback, it's actually animated. So we have to press the space bar then to get them working. And as soon as it hits that 250, they're going to fly out then and start buzzing around Suzanne like so. And there you are. There is your actual bees buzzing around Suzanne. And as I said, you can see at the moment that these bees are actually a little bit outside of here, like I said. But what you can actually do is let's first of all put this up a little bit higher like so. And then what I'll do is I'll come back to my geometry nodes. Let's go on over to our geometry node. And I'm going to bring out then the maximum distance. So if I bring this distance out, you will see now that they actually start to float away much, much further than what they were doing before. 
and they are a little bit out as you can see as well now if i want to bring them all in let's bring them all in right close like so and now you can see that we've got a proper beehive they are a little bit out and the reason as well is why they're a little bit out is because they've we've actually got density there and we don't want them banging into each other so we've actually fixed it so that they're not going to collide with each other they're not going to collide with suzanne so it's fixed really really nicely for you guys now let's turn down the density so we'll put a density on five and as i said when you click on these you just have to wait till it gets to the end of the timeline before it re um calibrates itself and once it gets there you will see so you can see here it's actually running up once it gets to 500 mark you'll see then it'll start out and we'll end up with a lot lot less bees and here we go and now you can see that they're a lot you know more into this actual area because they've not colliding with each other now as i said we also have things like speed we have turn factors in here we have a speed randomness in here so if we turn up the speed randomness a little bit some of these bees will be flying faster than other ones we can turn up the scale randomness so if i turn up the scale as you can see turn up the scale randomness you'll see now we get a massive difference between these bees then we've got the flap speed so we can turn up how fast these wings are actually flapping again most of the time on these you have to let it restart again before it actually does that but you can see this is looking pretty crazy now we don't actually want to push it this far and there we go now we can see the wings are flapping much faster we've also got as well on here the flap speed randomness and we've also got the flap angle in other words how high up do you want them to go so you can have them so they just continuously glide you can have them if i put them on 20 or something you'll see now that the wings they're kind of flapping a little bit but only going so far up so in other words if i come to my b let's press dot on this b this wing base is set to 45 degrees which means it's going to go up come down go up come down if we only set it to 20 degrees it's only going to go up slightly so that's what we've actually done there and this is mainly for birds but it also works for the bees as well now the other thing is we can uh, as, low, as well as this, we can actually make them glide as well. So let's make them all glide without really flapping the wings. So this is the probability of gliding. Now what I want to do is I just want to reset these then down to the, not, um, the proper scale. So let's put it on 0 0.3, 0 0.05. Uh, let's put this on 20. Let's put this on 90. Let's put this on glide probability or flap angle. Sorry, 90. This one here, flap speed randomness, let's put on 0. And finally, the glide probability, let's also put on zero. And let's give a lot of bees here. So let's put the density on 50. Um, and I think we're ready to go then. So let's see what happens when we get to the 500. And then what we'll do is we'll talk about the moss. And boom, there we go. And that is a lot of bees, as you can see, going around there. Now, finally, before moving on to the moss, I can tell you that these actually work in real time as well. So this is actually on Blender Cycles. As you can see, it's actually working in real time on both Blender and EV. And EV is just about what actual uh, materials are going here. So let's put it on EV. And here we go. Let's press on pause. And there you go. It's working all in real time. A proper swarm of actual bees there. All right. So what I'm going to do now is just press pause. And let's talk about our moths now. So if I come to our moths, let's put it back onto cycles like so let it load up and then what i'm going to do is just press space bar and you can see the moths here now what i'm also going to do is i'm just going to grab my lamp and as you see as i move this around the actual um creatures or swarms or whatever it is that you're using actually will follow the light around so you could animate this light swinging and then all of these moths will actually follow it around like so all right so that is the birds bees and swarm setup and now let's move on over to the birds which you saw flying over my Amazon scene. So we've also included flock flying as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first of all gonna show you how that works. So first of all, let's just press Shift A and this one works on an actual curve. So if I come up and I bring in a path and then what I'm gonna do is press Shift Space Bar, move, just bring my path over here like so. I'm gonna press the S button. And the best thing about this flock of birds is I can move this in any angle I want. So if I um, come in, Grab this uh, this one here, press shift space bar for the move tool. And then what I'm going to do is just bring it down a little bit like so. So we'll have our birds starting over here and ending over here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset my transformations. So right click the origin to geometry. And then what I'm going to do is add a modifier and we're going to bring in a geometry nude. And then what I'm going to do is come in and bring in the flock V2 like so. And then the type is going to be a arrow. 
Now, basically, what does the type mean? You can see here it's an arrow like this. We are able to, as well to change this into a blob or an arrow. So I'm going to put my base curve on so I can actually see what it's actually doing. And then what I want to do now is the bird count. So you can see here we've got bird count. Let's actually put our bird count at 13. So we'll start like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my falcon over here. You can see I've got a falcon. Body again is going to be this part here. And then we've got the wings, which is going to be this part here. Now you can see again, nothing is happening yet. And that's simply because at the moment we have no scale on here. So all I'm going to do is set this to 0.4. And then I'm going to set this to 0.1. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the speed to 10. And I'm just going to put it on repeat just so it keeps repeating around this. Next of all, then, I'm not going to actually touch any of that. What I'm going to do now is press spacebar. And hopefully when this actual starts at 500, we should end up with some birds flying over there, as you can see. First of all, they're very, very fast, <laughs> which they shouldn't be. And second of all, they're very, very big, which they shouldn't be. So now let's come in and actually fix that. So first of all, we'll put this on one. Second of all, then we'll put the bird scale on 0.1. And then 0 0.050, like so. And now let's press spacebar. And hopefully when this bird's restart, so you'll see when it gets to 500, you will end up seeing them restart again. So here we go. Get to 500. And there we go. Okay, so why are they all flying like that? Because I haven't actually changed the size yet. So let's put the size on 15. And now let's give them a try. And there we go. Now you can see that they're flying away and once they start again you'll also see that they actually fly in an arrow like you can see with these ones here so let's let this just start again and then you'll see and then i'll make this a little bit smaller and hopefully we'll get the right setting so there's the birds let's pull them down then so we'll pull them down all the way to something like three let's try that and there we go there's your birds now the other thing is of course you can see they are flapping kind of slowly at the moment so let's increase the flap speed something like three let them load up again again they need to restart to actually do this and there we go glide probability is on 0.5 so let's actually put that down a little bit so they're all flapping and there we go now they're all flapping let's uh, come in and change the um, offset a little bit let's change the offset just a little bit and basically what that's doing now is you can see it's flapping twice as you can see and then finally let's come in and actually change this to a blob instead let's see what happens when we change this to a blob and now you can see it's pretty randomized and they're flying over there like so now again these actual birds as well they are meant to be um in the background they're not meant to be up close or anything like that we didn't create them with that in mind we created them to fly over the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them onto an arrow and then i'll show you what else to do i'm going to press space bar i'm going to put this on let's say 3000 like so i'm going to get them to be um kind of the right size first so i'm going to bring them down a little bit this arrow so let's press space bar let's just get them right before we finish like so, I'm going to bring down the bird size as well. Let's bring them down. I'm going to definitely bring down the randomness to zero. I want them all the right, right size. And now they're looking much, much better. Now, what can we actually do with these birds now? So I can come in and grab my actual um, curve in real time. I can press uh, space bar and then press E, 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 and E. And the birds will actually follow that curve. We can also turn off our base curve like so. And there you go. Now that's exactly what you want. Now you can see them flying past your, you know, your Aztec scene or your dystopian world. And you can actually have birds in the background flying away like so. Now let's just pause that for one second then. So just to reiterate then, what you actually get in this pack is you get two geometry nodes. One of them is for swarms. So swarming around, you know, Suzanne or beehives or lights. And the other one is the actual flock of birds. So a really, really useful geometry node for this sort of thing. And also you're able to go away and download a free version of this, which is just the setup. So it's just basically showing you the bees. There's no actual geometry node on there, but it will show you what it's actually going to look like. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and purchase that. We do actually give both two licenses here, one standard and one is commercial. In case you're using it for commercial products or anything like that, and that is everything from me. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Happy modeling. Cheers.